Pati wai na zau na pilin, pilin da alja nu suka shari. There were a high number of uh, polio malaitis cases in the country, numbering more than a thousand. There was fear. People were skeptical about the safety of the vaccine. In the years before the NTLC officially joined the fight against polio, sadly, many Nigerian children were affected by the polio virus. Over a 10-year period, According to the World Health Organization, WHO, children affected every year by the virus ranged from 20 to over 1,000. We understood that one of the barriers was the lack of that linkage with the communities. So at that point, we went back to uh, the traditional institution and laid it on the table to the traditional leaders and said, here we are. We want to retrace our steps. We understand that if we continue doing the same things and expect different results, then we're not going about it the right way. So they came back to us with the idea of setting up a coordinating platform for all traditional leaders uh, in Northern Nigeria. That is what became the Northern Traditional Leaders Committee on Routine Immunization and Primary Healthcare Strengthening. The history of uh, the engagement of uh, Northern Traditional Leaders into the National Initiative to Eradicate Polio could be traced uh, to the first visit of uh, the Honorable Minister of Health in the company of uh, Mr. Bill Gates. They went to Sokoto to solicit the understanding and cooperation of uh, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, uh, to bring in the Northern traditional leaders to partner with the federal government and other development partners uh, engaged in uh, the global uh, polio eradication initiative uh, in Nigeria. The council felt that it needs to put in place a strong machinery to look into these aspects so that we enlighten, mobilize, and sensitize our populace so that we get all our children in this to achieve the desired success. Before the meeting winded up, His Eminence set up a committee of traditional leaders, one each from the 19 states of uh, Northern Nigeria and Abuja, so 20 of us that this committee is to lies with the primary health care and then give feedback to the other traditional ones so that together we put into machinery each traditional ones to participate in his domain. And uh, the following month in July, in 2009, barely three weeks after the committee was set up in Kaduna, uh, the committee was inaugurated in Abuja and we started work immediately. We started uh, by asking to be informed exactly what the disease is all about and what is needed to eradicate it. And uh, we had a series of trainings. The concern we initially had was the vaccine potency. So the then federal government decided to draw the attention of the Jamaat al Nasr Islam. And then, as a result, the Jamaat al Nasr Islam and the federal government decided to form a committee to prove that this polio vaccine is not dangerous. So a 23-man committee was raised by the federal government comprising of traditional laws, scientists from one Federation of Muslim Women, including press crew were attached. I was also made the chairman of this 
fact-finding committee, we undertook a tour of South Africa, Indonesia, and then India, during which we went into the laboratories, we tested all our vaccines, the one we took from Nigeria, and then came back and gave a report to the federal government. All those that went on behalf of Jane, I attested to the fact that uh, they couldn't find anything wrong in either the process of manufacturing the vaccine or the usage or impact of the vaccine because it is the same vaccine that we use in Nigeria that is used in Egypt, the same that is used in uh, uh, Saudi Arabia and most of the major Muslim countries are, uh, across the globe. And I could recall after that visit, uh, we, we used that to, 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 to dampen you know, the mistrust. We put it as a mandate to be meeting quarterly, discussing strategies and issues, and then to be reporting what could be after one action which was to be followed. From there, we put in sensitization strategies where we penetrated with the ideas that let our people give uh, chances to the field officers to conduct or to carry out uh, immunizations. And uh, from there, everything started moving well. every community there are people who can network there are people trusted by the community and there are people who can open doors and in the north we identified traditional leaders as key gatekeepers who could help us unlock the door to reach in the communities children within this area must be vaccinated and you have seen the sign now you have seen they have started since morning and now it's getting to two and still there are a lot of children here so we assured you in the next six days we should immunize every child within this area in the north people are much more attached to their traditional rulers and so every problem they have the first part of call of their problems which they hope to be sorted out in the area, or the district head, or the village head, or the mayor of West. That is the first point of call for our people. Traditionally, in our communities, if you have a disease which doesn't answer or work out with uh, efforts by doctors in our communities, we give it all sorts of things. And some of our communities, they call it uh, Chiwondaji, that is uh, a disease of the bush, literally. Somebody brought the economic politics into the issue of polio. Said the vaccine has been polluted with family planning chemicals, so that whoever takes the vaccine, whether a man or a woman or a child, it means that is destroying his fertility. That is the beginning of the problem. And these injections are more in the northern part of this country. So with this in view, the government took it uh, very serious because there are uh, mass injections for many reasons. Some people said it is uh, it sterilizes uh, women. Some people said it's uh, HIV 
in disguise and so many, so many things. And we mentioned it to the National Healthcare Agency that you cannot succeed alone. You need the support of the public. Yeah, from experience, we knew uh, if you want to change your opinion, you need to understand actually why are people rejecting whatever it is that they reject. You need to be able to understand traditionally what is the perception of the problem and then try to, to, to see how you can educate uh, and counter that energy. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, after getting ourselves fully informed, we went back and tried to organize training sessions also. First for our colleagues, the AMS at the top. Then we did the same for the district heads. Then we cascaded that training to the village level. We brought in uh, the religious leaders uh, and anybody who can influence the community. Talk to them, get them to see what we see and understand what we understood. And together we delivered uh, the message to our community. And uh, I think uh, yeah, our greatest uh, strategy was actually getting everyone involved. <laughs> We made sure that uh, almost every village head knows how this disease is transmitted. That they understand why you need to be vaccinated severally. And uh, that they understand that the only cure for polio is actually prevention. Once a child becomes infected, there's nothing you can do to, to cure the disease. And uh, we also addressed uh, the perception that uh, it is caused by a gene. Uh, you know, then look, it's caused by a virus, which is a bug, not a gene. Many people give us that respect as leaders. We want people that will rule over. If you don't have children, where do you get people to rule? It is not true that these things happen. In fact, there was a time a professor from one of the universities was campaigning against it. And uh, of course, we tried and tried and tried and eventually, I think the Emir of Zaria got into it and called him. And uh, of course, not that he, 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 he didn't maintain his uh, belief, but again, he had to respect the Emir. <laughs> so what was he to do was to keep quiet. So that respect that the traditional rulers have has helped a lot. When people begin to disseminate such messages, then faith leaders and community leaders and their mayors and bishops and the imams are needed to give the correct message. So what we did uh, from the point of view of the presidential task force is to mobilize the emirs, the community leaders, to give the correct messages. Knowing fully where the lives of these children are so important. When you watch an emir vaccinating his grandchild, when you watch Sultan vaccinating a member of his family, he tells you, the message is clear, the pictures are very clear, that if this is dangerous, Sultan or the emir will not be vaccinating a member of his family. So, we live by example, ensuring that what we tell people to do, that we are doing it. What we discovered was that there was lack of serious explanation initially for people to understand what it is all about. So we are the traditional rulers who are leaders of these people. We took it upon ourselves to explain to them what it is all about. And as a result of the people we have selected to talk personally to them and explain to them where there are issues, they bring those issues to us. We sit down together with them and find solution.
abin da yasa suke magana me yasa mutane ba a kawo mana taimako na cutan malaria da sauran cututtuka amma sai a ce folio folio kullum folio me yasa ba za a yi sauran abubuwan ba me yasa wannan ne zai zama kyauta to wannan shine abin da yake daure wa mutane kai mu ma mun nuna musu da fare mu ma ba mu yadda ba amma da masana suka zo suka yi mana bayani muka zauna muka discussion har suka gamsar da mu cewa eh wannan abun baya da illa the situation was somehow sympathetic because of lack of enlightenment at the grassroots and at times when you vaccinate somebody tomorrow you go there they have forget forgotten that everything has a booster i don't know what is booster they will just start telling you that the vaccine you are giving is too much so all these churches that you know and in those area you send somebody who will go they will go and believe it and accept it so it's part of the strategy that people accept the traditional institution of northern nigeria is rich we have medical doctors we have engineers we have people in every field and so so we we had to use knowledge to counter what the professions are saying <laughs> Somebody was trying to copy what they did in, in Pakistan, and somebody said, "Ah, I, I, they know how to stop it. To stop this uh, polio campaign, they killed a few of uh, the bastards." why people uh, reject is because uh, those come in to vaccinate their children are aliens to the culture, to the society, you know, to the environment where the children are. So we decided to domesticate it. And we told uh, every village head from within their community or from within a neighboring community to get somebody we can to be able to deliver the vaccine. It's not a very difficult thing. And also to bring uh, another person that can record Uh, that the child is um, another one who can mark the child. Uh, and so we domesticated the entire activity within the community. And with that, we created the uh, ownership. And uh, it became uh, a contest between our diverse traditional leaders. Nobody wants the, to see the disease in this community anymore. very serious security challenges. Despite all these security challenges, we are alive to our responsibility, telling them the importance of taking polio and the people, the community are responding to it without any hesitation. You see, people believe with us, they agree with that, so they cooperate with that, you see, and they, they take our words ahead of anybody's word when they are the traditional rulers. Alhamdulillah, they have done what his MS asked them to do. When they are taking the beta 100%, because they know he will not take them to bad thing or bad place or, you know, because he you know his MS is very kind to everybody, both Muslim and Christian. Besides that, we are meeting to bring some issues. What is the lapses? What is the problem? We we'll sit down, discuss, and look for the solution. To a certain extent, you cannot allow somebody to come and destroy your own community and people by his own selfishness. So where we have said that these are the things that people should abide by, in other words, they must do that. Where you try to show so much resistance with no any basic reason to defend yourself, then you will be uh, forced to accept if it is not something that will harm 
you as a person, but rather will improve your own life and the life of the people surrounding your, your household. So we make sure that things are done the way it should be. And we do it according to the law of the land. So in the area of uh, immunization in particular, we have about 95% compliance, 95%. Where we had some hitches or challenges are with the new arrivals, those that were being brought late. Some of them are from Niger, Chad, far into Cameroon, and some of them are not aware of immunization in particular. But by the community awareness, they have been accepting it, especially the polio. And uh, within 12 months, Within 12 months, we brought down the burden from 900 plus to just 22 across northern Nigeria. And it was a miracle. Nobody could believe it could be done. And uh, the United Nations became very interested. How did we do it? They had been on this job for 19 years without any success, without any breakthrough. And within nine, 10 months, you know, the burden in Nigeria has been brought down to, from 900 plus to just 22. We closed 2010 with just 22 cases throughout the country. Even uh, partners like Bill Gates, Dangote, saw wisdom in this Sultan's decision to bring the traditional rules on board. They also key into our program. They are also part of person in supporting the committee in achieving its mandate. It was really a sad situation to see children paralyzed from a disease that had effective vaccine available to protect them. And um, it really boiled down to uh, trust. It boiled down to information that communities needed uh, to really convince them that the vaccine is safe. I can tell you that the involvement of the NTLC to the leadership, very strong leadership of His Eminence the Sultan of Sokoto has been a dramatic game changer. I can tell you that Nigeria could never have contemplated becoming polio free without the inputs and the influence of the NTLC led by His Eminence the Sultan of Sokoto, Alaja Abubakar Saad. The um, Northern Traditional Leaders, which is commonly known as NTLC, it constitutes a uh, quarterly meeting uh, where all the emirs are coming and they have um, an agenda called polio eradication, routine immunization and child survival. So the, the northern traditional leaders are not only supporting polio, they are already uh, supporting routine immunization, ensuring that those children are eligible for um, vaccine after birth. Since the formation of the council, um, we have seen tremendous improvement uh, because, as I say, you cannot shave somebody's head in his absence. Uh, so if people don't bring their children to be immunized, you can have all the infrastructure, you can have all the money in the world. If you cannot get those two drops into the mouth of the child, and the child is not protected against polio. And what the traditional leadership have done is to make sure that the information percolates down to the smallest level of traditional leadership up toward heads. Uh, the emirs and the district leadership um, ensured that at every level where there was a committee or a task force that has to do with polio, 
traditional leadership was represented. We've worked at the um, at the different levels, the, the level of the committee itself, uh, chaired by the uh, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, and then down at the uh, at the state level, we have the the you know the the emirs uh, based on the emirates that are uh, out there, and then we have at the community level there is also a network, the foot soldiers, the ones who are teamed up with um, the vaccination teams. So, for instance, in one year alone, in 2019, we had um, over 300,000 community leaders that were actually involved in in the program itself at the field level. This was a turning point for the program. Um, it is still very much an integral part of the polio program currently. Um, we are still working closely together. This um, systematic engagement of the NTLC in routine immunization and child health services as well as the primary health care services is already on. So uh, we see that beyond polio, there is a huge agenda. Um, by the NTLC and also uh, let me also reiterate their support for girls education and uh, uh, and also uh, convincing the parent to um, to ensure that dropout is less so um, they're also supporting uh, in uh, exclusive breastfeeding and no water campaign and many other areas so we leverage this NTLC for um, uh, for many child health intervention beyond polio education. We recognize the strength of uh, community engagement for whatever public health program that you are trying to implement. Um, the communities are the owners of, of the programs. If you want them to succeed, if you want programs to succeed, communities have to be involved. They need to understand the uh, benefits of interventions and then be able to demand uh, and take ownership for, for services. And uh, everybody wanted to know how it was done. There was uh, a committee of experts meeting in Mina and uh, they, 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 they invited that I should come to tell them how did we do it. Uh, still it wasn't enough, they invited us to come to the United Nations in New York uh, to really hear firsthand how we did it and what are the lessons we learned within those 12 months uh, that we worked with uh, WHO, we worked with UNICEF and were able to, to, to achieve this, this success. And we told them just what I told you that we domesticated it. Uh, a sacrifice we feel is uh, worth doing. It's a sacrifice that we look back with joy. Uh, you know, uh, you, you realize uh, 10 years ago, close to a thousand children are crippled for life. And today, not a single one. And uh, you will only realize this when uh, sometime in Sokoto, I think uh, the University of Sokoto, uh, Osman, University, Osman Afodio University in Sokoto, you know, they decided to build a kind of structure that can be used to help the crippled children to stand. I could recall in Sokoto, we were watching a clip, you know, of one such child who has been crippled for nearly 10 years. And the first day they were able to put those things on his legs and he stood up. Oh my God. He looked back at the camera and smiled. Everybody shed a tear. That was how bad it was. And today, nobody, not a single child in Nigeria is uh, likely to be infected by the disease. Now the story has changed.
Nigerian children can dream of a brighter future without the devastating effect of the wild polio virus. Following the recent declaration of Nigeria as a wild polio virus free country by the Independent Africa Regional Certification Commission on Polio Eradication. The success currently in Nigeria is jubilating. You know, was linked to the involvement of traditional leaders in the campaign. They took it upon them, did all the necessary social mobilization campaigns, and there and then, then you started reducing the number to zero level and uh, up to what we are now experiencing as a success story in the Polio Eradication Initiative campaign. We are custodians of the culture and tradition of the people. We, we are trusted by the people. Uh, so, message from us, it's easier for the people to accept than uh, it being sent the way it used to be sent. Uh, we told them that uh, the messenger is always uh, uh, as important as the message, or even more important than the message, especially if it's trusted. Uh, especially if the message is uh, suspected in the past time, you want to change opinions. So you need somebody who can, uh, who has the trust of the community. We have tackled polio, but there are so many other childhood killer diseases and other diseases ravaging our communities. So it's our responsibility to continue this very serious work in a much stronger capacity. Polio can be kept out of this country with constant immunization. It is not over until it is over. Routine immunization can stop the spread of polio. Routine immunization can keep polio away. Immunize your child today. Get your child immunized today. To protect every Nigerian child, routine immunization must continue.